Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel if you are new. Hello, my name is V. I post nail tutorials every Thursday and Sunday at 8.15 a.m. Central Time. Getting right into today's video, we are starting off with my pre-prepped practice hand. I went ahead and applied the C-curve tips from Not Polish. These are just the extra long ones. They do have the extra, extra long option, which is nice for those really long extendo nails. So I went ahead and applied those with Young Nails Brush on Glue. Now I am going in with my acrylic application. For today's video, I am doing a base color as my acrylic. I wanted to do more of the topical nail art. I love doing that as an option because it's easy for the exchange whenever the client comes back in and they wanna change that nail art. Super, super easy process. You just have to do a fill and change the topical nail art. So I love including these type of videos for you guys because I know a lot of clients do prefer that method versus getting acrylic designs. So for today's video, I am using the Not Polish Acrylic Monomer. Along with that, I'm using their acrylic brush in the size 12. I do believe it's back in stock, so make sure you guys purchase that before it runs out again. And then for our acrylic color, it's a really pretty orangey, peachy nude. And I wanted to try this out because I feel like it's perfect for the springtime. We like those more springy colors and this definitely is one of those. This is called Touch of Lips from Not Polish. Super pretty color in my opinion. I became obsessed with it as I was using it. So I'm just going in and applying that as my base color. I do work with thin layers, it's just my preference. You can always build it up to your preference or your client's preference. But me personally, especially when I'm doing practice hand videos, I just go ahead and do a very thin layer of it because I honestly do not want to waste a lot of product. So I'm going ahead and applying that very carefully. With my acrylic application, I really focus on the sides. I wanna make sure that everything is super smooth while also cleaning the sides so that in the end, I don't have to do tons of filing. If you're not careful with cleaning up those sides, you will have to do a lot more filing at the end and me personally, I don't wanna do that. It saves a little bit of time if you focus on your acrylic application. Once you get really used to your acrylic application, it's very, very easy and you don't struggle a lot. I'm sure in the beginning I struggled a ton, but now I've gotten it down pretty well, especially with the not polished products. They're super easy to work with. So I don't have to worry too much of spillage or anything like that. Once you get your liquid to powder ratio down perfectly, it is a life changer. So I'm going ahead and doing that on the rest of the nails and then I'll get right back on.
Once I'm done with my base color, I do prefer to encapsulate. I do this all the time, no matter what color I'm using. Sometimes if I'm doing nude, I just go ahead and use nude, but because this is a practice hand, I am going ahead and using thin layers of both products. Here I am using the Not Polish Clear Acrylic and I'm just adding a little bit more thickness to that base nail for our design. Again, I'm not adding really any structure to it as I wanted to focus more on the design than the acrylic itself. I have tons of videos that fully explain my acrylic application process, so feel free to check them out. Tons of watch me work videos on actual clients, which help a ton. I know a lot of beginners prefer watching those kind of videos as it's more in depth and specific to natural nails. So make sure you guys check those out as well. All my playlists are super, super organized, so they will be easy for you to access they're broken down from seasons to specific designs to watch me work videos or any review specifically so make sure you guys check out my playlists i'm gonna go ahead and continue applying my clear acrylic i'm basically just building up any little areas that i feel needs a little bit more thickness in this step It's too late now to turn around and back again I made my bed and now I lay my head in it And I'm sorry I'm not perfect but I knew that I wouldn't be I guess it's for the best you know the worst Once everything is nice and dry, we are going in with our filing process. For my last video, you guys noticed that I did not have my Tammy Taylor Peel and Stick files. Those are my go-to and I literally use them in every single one of my videos. However, last time I did try out some new files, so if you guys missed that, go check it out. For today's video, we are using the Not Polish files. <laughs> I'm so excited, yet I was so terrified to use these, but again, I forgot my file was still at home, so this will do. I have officially determined that I prefer zebra grit files. So the last file that I tested out was not zebra grit, and I liked it, however, I was not fully convinced and in love with it. These not polished files, you guys, I feel like sometimes I sound like I'm being a little too excited about their products but i definitely love it and i honestly think it's because it's zebra grit as well so if you guys are familiar with zebra grit files you guys will understand that once you start using them there's no going back or changing so these i believe are their 100 zebra grit files they're super super sturdy they do claim to be reusable and disinfectable i think that's what it said on the package um 
I'm not quite sure how accurate that is because they are double sided and all that good stuff. That's the only reason why I prefer using the Tammy Taylor ones. It's super, super sturdy and you can just rip off the file, clean the backing of it and then put on a new one. These, however, I'm not quite sure. Of course, always test it out for yourself. I'm just using it on a practice hand, so honestly, it doesn't really matter if I can disinfect it or not because it's just a practice hand. But I'm going in on the sides, filing them first with that file. Definitely recommend if you guys are looking for good files, those are some good ones. Now I'm going in with my Kiara Sky rechargeable e-file. I have it at a speed of about 9,000 RPMs. And along with that, I'm using the Kiara Sky 5-in-1 bit. This one is medium grit, I believe. And I'm just going around the cuticle area very, very gently, making sure that the acrylic is nice and flush to the natural nail. And then I'm going over top of the surface, just making sure I don't have any crazy ridges or lumps. I'm just focusing on flattening all that out and making sure that the surface is nice and smooth. So when I'm filing, I like to go around the cuticle area and then vertically up and down the length of the nail. I have better control of my e-file that way in my opinion and for my personal experience. If I try to go horizontally side to side, I feel like I will lose control of it and it'll skip and it scares me and it scares the client. So I'd rather just stick to what I feel is safest and I feel more secure using. So that's my personal preference. I'm gonna go ahead and finish that filing and then we will get right back on. When it comes to shaping, I feel like it is really important and crucial to having a good set of nails. So I like to flip my hand around to look at the nails from a different perspective than from my personal view. You will be able to see any imperfections from this view that you might have missed and the client will catch. So make sure you flip it around and look at every angle of the nail. And at this point, I am taking my file and squaring off that tip. It just helps get everything super straight. Sometimes when you're looking at the nails from your angle, it looks different than what the client is going to look at. So you wanna make sure that their view is the perfect view. So once I'm done with that, I'm going in with my sponge buffer from Profiles Backstage and I am vigorously buffing that nail. These are super, super fine, which makes the nail super smooth, but you do have to apply a little bit more pressure to get any little ridges out, which I don't mind. I just love the smooth finish of these sponges. So I'm just going ahead and repeating that on the rest of the nails. Now I'm going in and cleaning the surface of the nail with the lint-free wipe and some swipe. Both are linked in my Amazon storefront. This is my favorite duo to use. I'm just going ahead and very well cleaning the surface of the nail along with my practice hand. And of course, when you are working on clients, the dust will not stick to their fingers this way, but I figured I would just go ahead and insert it just in case.
Now for our nail art, we are going to be using some decals. I believe I purchased these from Profiles Backstage. They're super, super pretty little sunflower decals. So I'm basically just putting them against the nail to see if it's going to look right with the color. And then I'm basically picking out which flowers I am going to be using. So I ended up going with these and I'm just taking these tweezers. These are from McCart. And I love that they're slanted. So I'm going ahead and removing it from the sheet and then I'm going to be placing one on one of the nails and then I'm taking a second one and applying it on the ring finger and I am basically placing them on opposite ends just because I wanted to give it a little bit of extraness to it. I did see a design on Instagram. If I remember who it was from, I just looked at it, I liked it, and I figured I would recreate my version of it. I'll leave it linked down below, but right now I can't think of her name. So basically her set was cheetah print and it had like rose gold in it somehow, but I decided to do a spring summer version of it. So I'm taking these decals and I am actually taking a lint free wipe and some swipe and really pressing that into the nail. This helps kind of melt the decal onto the acrylic so that it goes on flawlessly and you don't have any little ridges or anything sticking up. I'm taking black gel paint. This is the black gel paint from Profiles Backstage. It's from their frosting gel paint. I love their products. I talk about them all the time. Super inexpensive and very, very good quality. These have become very quickly my favorite gel paints to work with. They do cure to a shiny finish, so you don't have a tacky layer, which I also appreciate. So I'm going in with my favorite nail art brush, my go-to one from Amazon. And I am just starting to draw some cheetah print, leopard print, whatever it's called. I'm basically just taking a good amount of paint on the tip of my brush. And then I'm creating that design. It's super easy. It's one of my favorite nail arts to do because you honestly cannot get it wrong. So I just make sure that I do kind of the same pattern throughout the nail and I think it looks super cute and I feel like the yellow really complements it and it really pops, which is exactly what I was trying to get. Just a little pop of color against that black. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that. I'm also doing the same design onto the middle finger, but I'll let you guys watch the rest of that and then I will be back. And if you guys have missed it in any previous videos, this little LED light is from Amazon. You can find it in my Amazon storefront. I freaking love it for nail art. It makes very, very easy transition from one finger to the next. It cures it perfectly. So definitely recommend it if you guys are nail art lovers like myself and love to use gel paint.
Now for our pinky, I'm doing two little chevron nail kind of nail art. I'm going to be using yellow. This one is from the frosting gel paint from Profiles Backstage as well. I love this yellow. It's super, super pretty, perfect for summer and spring. Again, still using that same brush and I'm just going ahead and drawing my first little line. And then I'm gonna be doing the second one right above the first one. And then of course, flash cure that with your little light and then we're gonna be moving on to our index finger. Now when recreating designs from other nail techs, I always try to give them a twist to give it some sort of difference. I like getting designs and creating my own version of it. I feel like it's always fun to get ideas from other people, but of course give them credit and try to make it your own at the same time. So for this one, I believe she used crystals on one of the nails. I'm actually gonna be doing some sugaring. So because that's going to be topical nail art on top of the top coat, I am top coating these nails first and I am very well rubbing that into the nail art nails because they can become a little bit raised when you draw on them and you wanna make sure that every little section is fully covered. So for this step, I'm just using Matte It from Not Polish. Of course, I'm doing matte nail art. <laughs> I cannot stay clear from it. You just get such good pictures and I feel like every design looks good in matte. So I'm going to be fully curing that in my Kiara Sky LED light. I'm putting it in there for a good minute. So I noticed there was something on that nail and I went ahead and just scratched it off, no biggie. And then I'm going back in. Now once I'm done curing that, I'm going in with my yellow once again and I'm actually gonna be doing the V cut on the index finger and then we're gonna be doing sugaring over top. Still using the same yellow gel paint and somehow I cut out the other side when I was drawing it, so disregard that, but I'm basically just repeating the exact same steps. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish that off and then I'm going to be taking the Sugar Effect from Not Polish. It is their loose sugaring glitter on the wet surface of the gel paint and I'm basically going to be sprinkling it over top. You want to make sure that you are getting all of it fully covered. What I like about this glitter is that it's super translucent and it gives such a pretty effect. And so you can still see the color underneath. It just adds a nice little sparkle. So we're gonna be curing that in the light. Of course, you wanna make sure that you get it all nice and cured. So I use my little light if I'm in a rush, but then I go ahead and place it in the hand once I'm working on the other hand on a client. This is for my day That basically concludes today's video. Do not forget to shop my merch, you guys. We just dropped a different design. My lovely husband did create another design for the merch, and I'm so excited to be sharing that with you guys. It turned out super, super cute, and I am absolutely obsessed with your guys' selfies. If you guys do tag me, I will share them onto my stories. But that basically concludes today's video. Let me know what you guys think down below. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys learned a ton, and I will see you guys next time. Bye.